Welcome to the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, episode number 197. Indie filmmakers have more opportunity today to get their movie out into the world than ever before. Mongo Wilder. Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, my Indie Film Hustlers, to another episode of the Indie Film Hustle Podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Now, today's show is sponsored by taylorsound.com. One of the most complicated problems I've had in my professional career is sound and sound mixing, sound design. It's generally always very expensive, but Taylor Sound has come onto the scene and has done something pretty incredible. Like so many other things you have in the world today, now you can get your sound design online. They're offering flat promotional rates for commercials, music videos, short films, and any other video content that's short form. They're very affordable, and because you are an Indie Film Hustle Tribe member, we'll get 15% off your order. Just type in the word hustle in the post your brief section. That's T-A-I-L-O-R sound.com. So as promised, I have a special episode completely dedicated to the Sundance Distribution Fellowship. I'm so excited about this, guys. I wish I would have even known about it uh, before. I don't think they even had it when Meg was being distributed because I would have submitted to it because it's such an amazing opportunity uh, to be part of the Sundance tribe, if you will, uh, to be able to get through those ivory doors. And and the manager of the program, Liz Manichel, is giving you that opportunity, giving everyday filmmakers the opportunity to get their film out into the world in a big way. So please welcome back Liz Manichel from Sundance. Welcome back to the show, Liz. Thanks for coming Hi. back. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. How are you? No guest in the history of this podcast has been back to back in their Woo-hoo. releases. Um, the reason why I wanted to bring you back is we we skimmed over it, and I know a lot of people listening to the old uh, interview, the other interview we did kind of just skimmed over the fact that you work for Sundance. And, <laughs> and, and I purposely did that to torture the tribe. Um, good, good. But I just, I wanted, because I wanted to give a, its own spotlight to what you do at Sundance and how you guys are helping filmmakers. So please talk to me about what you do at Sundance and what you're looking for and how, how you can help independent filmmakers. Cool. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, so I'm the manager of the Creative Distribution Fellowship at Sundance. Oh, sorry. Crap. Crap, Alex. I just said it wrong. Okay. Um, <laughs> so- I am the manager of the Creative Distribution Initiative at Sundance. And we're like the marketing and distribution consultants for Sundance filmmakers. Mm-hmm. Um, we do workshops around the country and we talk with filmmakers about releasing their work. And we have uh, a partnership. This is where it gets um, a little nerdy. Go for we it. have a partnership with an aggregator. So um, we give discounted rates to Sundance alumni to get their films on like iTunes, Amazon, sure. Google Play, all that stuff. You know this very well. Mm-hmm. Um, so traditionally, our department has been kind of inward facing where we just support alumni. Mm-hmm. But we're changing that where we're doing a lot more educational and public facing things. Mm -hmm. And, um, the big one is we're launching this fellowship. It's called the creative distribution fellowship. Mm -hmm. There's no application fee. It's open. It's free. It's public. We have a, a few requirements for it, but the point is we're trying to support filmmakers who may be interested in doing self distribution with Sundance and we only have 30 applications submitted right now. And I think it's a crime. I'm just like really upset by it. And now we were talking off air about this. That like, I feel the reason why is, well, one, you probably haven't had, uh, you didn't get the word out enough yet. But two, when you do, whoever does hear it, you're like, oh, it's Sundance. Why should I submit? There's going to be thousands and thousands of people going after this. Why should I even take the time <laughs> out? And this is a perfect example for everyone listening. You never know. There's 30 guys. There's, There's 30, 30 applications. I manage the fellowship. I can see who submits. I can see who's has applications in progress. I know who's not turning in their applications and who are. Now what uh, now what is exactly the fellow so what would you be providing to filmmakers who get this fellowship? It's really cool and I get really um you know long-winded and I'm going to try not to do go for that it, go for because it. um okay so basically we we 
this is our second year, but our first year was inaugural year. It was very like private. So we picked two films that were Sundance supported films and we gave them um, a lot of money and support. And those films were Columbus and Unrest. Mm -hmm. Um, So Unrest is a documentary. Columbus is a fiction feature. They're doing amazing. Uh, Columbus is nearing um, a million at the box office. Uh, Unrest is in the top 10 of the iTunes charts right now for a documentary. Um, so what we did is we essentially gave them grant money. These were films that decided not to do an all rights distribution deal. Mm -hmm. We gave them grant money. We have, um, an already teed up mid five figure subscription VOD deal. And that's minimum. It could grow from there, but that's just the floor. So say that, say that again, you have a, a five, a a five, what did you say? A minimum minimum. A mid five figure subscription sure. VOD deal. So that means automatically, because it's coming through you guys, you, you're automatically getting uh, a mid figure deal with either uh, Netflix or Hulu or Hulu one of these. or Amazon Prime. Yeah. yeah, one of the top three, and they're part of the fellowship. So they have all they've automatically said the films that we chose. You know, the four films that we choose, they're they're in to make an offer, a blind offer. Pure, yeah. Um, because they're using the you, yeah. Because they're using you as the taste, the tastemaker, and yes. they're like, if it's coming through you guys, we're gonna believe you. <laughs> yes, yeah. It's. I mean, again, I like I get. I know this is my job, but like I, this is really cool. So it I like is. to talk it up. Um, we have discounted uh, rates for you know that aggregator I was talking about. So mm-hmm. you would get access to Sundance rates to get your film on iTunes, Amazon, Google Play. You get Sundance branding. You're part of the Sundance family. And then um, we're pairing you up with um, mentors oh. who can help you know, help you strategize things. And then there's the grant money, which is $25,000 per film. And did I mention Sundance takes nothing from you, no money. We don't take a distribution fee. But what we do require is we require filmmakers to be transparent with us. Mm -hmm. We say, tell us about your budget. Tell us about your net revenue. Report to us. Report the grosses. Report the nets. And we're going to take all the information we learned. We're going to package it into a case study. And we're going to publish it for everyone to see and learn from your experience. It's, It's all an educational initiative. Wow. It's really flipping cool. And there's 30 um, and there's 30 And there's applic- only 30 applications. <laughs> and there's four slots. There's four slots. There's four slots. It's probably going to end up being two fiction features and two nonfiction features, but you know, um that's not written in stone. And right. the only thing we require it needs to be a recently completed feature with either a recent or upcoming festival premiere. So we're saying 2017 or 2018 festival premiere. Mm -hmm. The festival needs to be at, you know, one that's been around for five years, but we're not saying you have to be at Cannes or Toronto or TIFF. There's a lot, yeah, there's a lot of festivals that have been around for five years. Yeah. And then, um, you know, we ask for a U.S. or a Canada, Canada based crew just so we can like talk to you once a week and help you. Mm -hmm, And it's mm -hmm. just like for time zones. And so we, I think originally we were really worried that we would get an influx of applications and we're like, let's just keep this North America. (laughs) Right. Because, because that, how many, how many uh, submissions are there to the festival itself every year? Yeah. Like thousands, 30,000 or something. Yeah. (laughs) Some insane amount. So we thought we were treading in that territory, but I'm like the one woman marketer for the fellowship. Like we have an amazing marketing department at Sundance who has definitely tried to spread the word. But beyond that, it's just me (laughs) writing emails to people. I just think, I just think people don't believe you. I think that's honestly, (laughs) I honestly think because if you've got the, 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 the marketing might of Sundance and the, and obviously the credibility of Sundance behind you, you're giving money away, you're giving distribution away. Right. And, and yet people are just like, nah, nah, this is a scam. This is just, just absolutely no way this is true. Maybe you're right. I've been really (laughs) trying to figure it out. I don't understand. It's very bizarre to me because I think, I think the real uphill battle for us is explaining distribution within the context of what we're offering. So like, I think a lot of filmmakers don't really understand what, what they could be getting with a distributor and what they most likely will be getting with a distributor. I don't right. know if that makes sense. It makes but perfect like, sense. Yeah. So it's like with us, 
a lot of the filmmakers we talk to who have already made one film, they look at our deal and they're like, oh, that's a, that's a really awesome deal. That's pretty amazing. But the filmmakers who have not experienced distribution yet, right. um, they don't really know <laughs> that this is just like, this is like the most amazing thing ever. No, yeah. that's the thing. And, and that's uh, for everyone listening. I want, I want to be very clear about this because I've gone through this process now with my film, the deal that, that Sundance is offering is pretty remarkable and pretty amazing if you can get involved with that. Even just to be in the Sundance family um, yeah. is, is you've getting past the pearly gates uh, at that point. A lot of people who have their movie and they haven't gone out to the distributors yet or haven't gotten gone through this process yet. And they're like, oh, it's only like mid five figures. I'm like, dude, <laughs> like. See. Dude, if you it's get a mid five license fee, yeah. Are you kidding me? Like, unless you have a, a million dollar movie, that's a different conversation. But you're talking about hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, or below. You know, low budget, micro budget films. Yeah. This is insane. Like, this is an insane deal. And there's different parts to it. So, like, I'm a micro budget feature filmmaker, as you know. Mm -hmm. So, I'm really trying to get the word out to my people because mm -hmm. I know that we're hustlers and I know that we could really um, do a lot with $25,000. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. <laughs> but what Like, I'm make another movie. No. <laughs> right. But exactly. Well, don't tell us that. What? Um, no, that's for the marketing. <laughs> <laughs> but what we're encouraging people to do, what filmmakers to do is take the $25,000 and just make that your digital marketing budget. Yes. Because it's like we're all about – I think what we're what really we're interested in is like what A24 is doing right now or yes. what these major distributors are doing where they're testing trailers and testing ad yes. spots. They're growing audiences. They're targeting and hyper-targeting who the audience is for each film. Mm -hmm. And then they're going all at that specific audience with those marketing opportunities so that you can make the most amount of money and maximize your return. Those are a lot of like really annoying distribution marketing terms. Mm -hmm. But basically we're just saying we want to help people grow their audience and make the most amount of money possible. No, and, and that's such a, a thing because now with the, the with the technology that we have with Facebook and Google, you can target ads to the audience that you're yes. trying to hit and do test marketing with fifty bucks, a hundred bucks. You can test a trailer. Yes, you can, that's exactly what we're talking about. Yeah, exactly. and like, and then as soon as you see something that hits, boom, just pump pump the the gasoline on the fire and then go. Yeah. Uh, and that's but you, a lot of times filmmakers just don't have that money to go and twenty five grand is a lot of money for digital art, uh, digital marketing. I mean, it is in a micro, in a micro budget, small niche way. It is a lot of money. Yeah. And if you wanted to do a theatrical run and you were $25,000 shy of doing a theatrical run, you could maybe talk with us about using that money to do that. I mean, we're fairly flexible because the whole thing is that we want you to get your film out into the world in the way you feel is appropriate. Mm -hmm. We don't make the decisions. We just offer the opportunities and then mm -hmm. maybe some guidance. Mm -hmm. um, so ultimately, it still remains the filmmaker's film. It's their strategy. We're sure. just there for support. That's amazing. And when's the deadline of this? Uh, this There's no deadline. <laughs> oh, you got to be kidding so me. It's, but what we're trying to, I'm trying to encourage applications to really file in now because the applications open until we pick four films. Oh, um, got you. And it's a dance. So like there are going to be films who are applying to Sundance or applying to Tribeca or South by, and they may be interested in our fellowship, but they may be like, well, I want to see if a 24 wants me or whatever it is. <laughs> um, I just going to like always reference a 24. No. Cause I, again, they're the cheerleader. They're the jock of, of, of the high school. Everybody wants to be with them. It's yeah, full. so like, like, I guess our theory is, or our practice is, um, you can, you can apply to us and then just say we're holding out as well for other opportunities. You don't have to sit, you don't have to go all in mm -hmm. and be like, I'm doing self-distribution or bust. But when you get to far enough in your application where, um, I need to schedule a screening with Michelle Satter and Carrie Putnam and mm -hmm. Tabitha Jackson and all these fancy people, mm -hmm. um, that's where we want that commitment. So it's, it's always a conversation and I'm basically giving out our email address for our department 
which is creative distribution at Sundance.org, mm-hmm. so that I could field some of these questions where mm-hmm. if you feel like you may not be right for the fellowship, mm-hmm. I can tell you. I can say whether you should apply or not. Well, I will put that in the show notes. So is there a website that people can go to? Well, I, I or is it just the email? Um, if you go to applications five dot sundance dot org, that's the application. Um, we have a department website, but it's like not the easiest route to get there. It's sundance dot org slash programs slash creative dash distribution dash initiative, mm-hmm. which I can send to you. But um, I'll put I'll put the link in the show notes, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Don't <laughs> yeah, worry. There's so many routes to get to us. Our big thing is that we know how Sundance may be perceived sometimes. No. And, <laughs> no. and at least our department, we wanna um, we wanna open those gates a little bit. We want people we wanna collaborate with filmmakers outside of the Sundance bubble. We want to be a service to filmmakers. We wanna help educate other filmmakers. And it's hard to do that when when the walls and the doors are locked shut, right? Mm-hmm. So we're trying to open up communication as best as we can. And, and the first thing to that is becoming available to, to chat with people. So chat with us. Liz, thank you so much. And thank you for what you're doing for filmmakers and guys, I will put all of this information in the show notes. So if I, if it was me and I, at that point in in time with Meg, I would have so submitted, (laughs) I would have so submitted back, you know, before our premiere and all that stuff. But if I would have known about it, um, but it's now my job. I'm taking the, I'm taking the mantle and I'm going to the, the, the torch and I will market this from the, the top of the, 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 the mountain to all filmmakers, as many as that will listen to me. So Thank I'll, you. I will do That's my really part. Awesome. I will do my part, Liz. Thank you so much again for everything you're doing for filmmakers. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you very much. I hope somebody in the tribe submits right now and gets that fellowship. If you guys do, if anybody in the tribe submits their application and gets the fellowship at Sundance, you have an obligation to call me and let me know. And I want you to tell me all about it and share it with the rest of the tribe. I hope one of us gets it. It would be amazing, uh, an amazing experience for anybody, any filmmaker, but more so for the tribe, anybody in the tribe. I really would just make me feel so, so happy. So go to the show notes at IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash 197 to get all the links and all the information about the fellowship and how you can submit. And I really want to thank Liz so, so much for being such a champion for independent filmmakers and helping artists to get their work out into the world. So thank you, Liz, from the bottom of my indie film heart. I truly, truly appreciate it. So you heard, go to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash 197 and apply if you've got a movie. Do it. And speaking of Sundance, I will be at Sundance this year again. I'm going to be talking over at Slamdance again this year for Black Magic uh, Design, talking about my uh, my adventures with the DaVinci Resolve, with uh, my Black Magic Ursa cameras, and how I used it to shoot uh, my legendary pictures, uh, digital series, the space program as well talking about a little bit of Meg also talking a little bit about dimension 404 and how I worked with that. So I'll be at slam dance. I'll give you more information about that once it's all settled in. And, uh, but I will be at Sundance. I'm going to be doing a ton of stuff at Sundance this year. It's going to be epic, epic. So I cannot wait to give you guys all the lowdown on all the cool stuff. We're going to be shooting, uh, content events, all sorts of cool stuff. So if you guys are going to Sundance, please reach out to me. I'm going to be there probably the first part, the first half of Sundance is generally when I go. I don't go to the second half because I can't do it. It's just too much. Uh, But I do uh, the first half and please reach out to me. I'd love to catch a coffee with you guys, uh, you know, party with you guys, do whatever. You know, I'd love to meet up with a bunch of the tribe at Sundance. That would be absolutely epic. So please reach out to me, guys. Uh, You can always email me at ifhsubmissions at gmail.com. And also don't forget... I'm still looking for more questions for the Ask Alex show. So please email me those questions so I can answer them uh, live in the show and uh, just help some more filmmakers and get some more 
great content out there to you guys. So as always, keep that hustle going, keep that dream alive, and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com.